Hi, I'm Laura Kwasnowski, the author of Ocean Lullaby, and this is my co-illustrator, my sister, Kate Harvey McGee. Hi. Today we're going to read Ocean Lullaby and tell you a little about its inception. Before we read our new book, we have a little song for you. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, how do you do? Good morning, friends and family, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us today. How do you do? Mary's playing in a acorn band. Good morning to you. Fairies playing, won't you take my hand? Good morning to you. They're calling you to play. Calling you today. Good morning. Come on, clap with me. Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, how do you do? Last time, good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, how do you do? Hello, readers. We're so glad you joined us today. Before we start reading, we wanted to thank the people at Green Bean Books. We got to visit Green Bean Books in 2017 when the first book that we made together came out, Little Wolf's First Howling. So thank you to Robin and Jennifer and Earl, and we wish we could be there again on your back porch, reading to the kids in front of the lilac bushes. But um, you know, we're glad we can do this. Shall we read? Okay. Let's start with the dedication. Dedication is, let's go to the beach. Say Laura and Kate. Song floats up, moon smiles down, while we rock to ocean sounds. Shh, hush, shh, hush. The ocean's soothing song. Shh, hush, shh, hush. We can sing along. Far offshore, the big whales doze. Mama's nudge calves to keep them close. Turtles float and shut their eyes. Jellies undulate and rise. Shh, hush, shh, hush. The ocean soothing song. Dolphins drift and mantas glide through the rocking, rolling tide. Along the reef, fish hide and spread tucked into their coral bed. Shh, hush, shh, hush. We can sing along. Octopus dreams in her cave underneath the swelling waves. Tide pools catch the moonlight's glow. Stars above, sea stars below. Shh, hush, shh, hush. The ocean soothing song. Monk seals find a sandy shore. Stretch their flippers, start to snore. <laughs> Rising waves break, spill, and reach, smoothing footsteps from the beach. Shh, hush, shh, hush. We can sing along. You, my sweet, my sleepy child, rest here in my arms a while. As the new moon rides the sky, dream the ocean lullaby. Shh, hush, shh, hush. That's it. That's the Ocean Lullaby, our new book. And that was the first public reading of it. Thank you for listening. When we were um, making this book, we learned a lot about what ocean animals do at night. One of the things I learned was that when whales are sleeping, the baby whale hasn't learned to, to breathe during the night. So the mama whale bumps the baby up to the surface now and again 
so that it can breathe all night long until the baby learns to do that on its own. In our first um, iterations of this book, we had the turtles and the jellyfish swimming together. But then as a marine science teacher named Susan Barth, who teaches in high school in Seattle, took a look at the dummy and she said, you know that turtles do eat jellyfish. And so we had to replan that page with a coral wall to keep them safe and apart. We also learned from Susan how fish sleep. It turns out they don't really sleep. They just have a quieter time. And to be safe, they'll tuck themselves into the coral beds. Well, once I heard that word beds, I knew I wanted to work it into the words of the story. One of my favorite animals in the book is the octopus. They're fascinating creatures. And you've heard of an octopus's garden? Well, I've actually seen the situation where the octopus will hide in a cave or in between rocks and cover themselves up with shells and coral to hide. I saw one once and all I could see was its eye peeking out. Cool. You know, kids, you can make your own little octopus cave with pillows and put your stuffed animals around the edge for decorations. Oh, and monk seals. Turns out they're very different than sea lions. They like to be alone. So they'll come out of the, they'll hunt alone at night and during the day they'll sleep, mostly alone or with their pups. So um, next we wanna talk about how two people, sisters, can work on the same illustration. Okay, as Laura was saying, people wonder how we can illustrate a book together when she's in Seattle and I'm in Oregon. We use digital tools and the internet. Laura lays out the book, what she wants on every page and finds scrap to help her draw the animals and scenes. Here's some of the scrap that inspired the, the illustrations in Ocean Lullaby. Laura uses it to draw the animals correctly and I use them to choose the correct colors. There are so many great pictures on the internet to choose from. <clears throat> then Laura does a final drawing for each spread. She makes a detailed drawing in preparation for painting the black lines that define our illustrations. Here's one for the octopus spread. Then, Laura paints the lines using a gouache resist technique. You can find a primer on how to do it yourself on her website, lmkbooks.com. She does an original painting for each spread, creating a rough, friendly line. She scans that into her computer and emails it to me. I pull it into Photoshop and make it transparent. It's the top layer of my drawing. In Photoshop, you work in layers like a sandwich and it will be the top slice of bread in this sandwich. Well, that's a good analogy. I start on the bottom layer first with the color. I create an underpainting whose color will tone the whole illustration spread. I paint with pastels at home most of the time, and this is a common technique I've adapted for my digital work. With Laura, we work this out together. So here's the top and bottom layer of my sandwich. And you can see that the blue's trans, you know, underneath the black layer. Then I've added here the sky. Um, I use digital brushes that are like pastels and I can vary their opacity to glaze one color over another. Here it goes from blue to pink to yellow. And this next phase, this next layer has the rocks locked in. And here's the more detail on the rocks and some sandy color ideas. Because I'm working in layers that I can turn off and on, I can experiment with color a lot. 
So okay, cool. here, this layer is actually the com combination of many layers that make this jump. So the octopus and its garden are almost done. And then I added some plankton, some splashier waves and a little sunlight on the birds. I will then email when I'm happy, I email this image to Laura and she makes suggestions. Sometimes the line changes, sometimes the colors. We go back and forth from Seattle to Oregon until we're both satisfied with the result. Here is what the color looks like without the lines. Not too interesting. It definitely takes both of us to make the illustrations work. Okay, I have a question for you, Laura. Okay. What inspired this book? And where do you get the ideas for your books? The first idea for this book came to me when I was sitting on a beach with some people singing. And, um, and I had my grandchildren on my lap we were rocking and up in the sky was a little crescent moon and the first I line just came to me that the song floats up and the moon smiles down while we rock to ocean sounds we were at Napili beach in on Maui and it was just a beautiful evening just as you've painted in the pictures Kate <laughs> oh, it, I think of this as a gift book it, that's happened to me twice once for this book and once um, when I wrote this, the first Zelda and Ivy book where the whole idea for the book just sort of like dropped into my lap. Lucky. And I, I like to ask you a question too. When we were little girls growing up in Sonora, California, we did a lot of art projects and stuff. Did, did you ever think we would make books together? No, it, it's been really a great joy. And I wish mom and dad could see what we've developed together. Yeah. Okay, how many books are there, Laura? We have the three we've done together. How many are there all together? This is my 21st book. Wow. One of them is a chapter book. Um, two, two of them are board books for really little kids, the kind of book you can chew as well as read. And three of them are... Um, toddler books on heavier pages and the rest are picture books that I wrote and illustrated except for these three that we have done together mm -hmm. and I have loved collaborating on them with you. Um, I was wondering, I know most of your work is called fine art, the kind of work that ends up in a gallery and I wonder um, what's the difference between making fine art and illustration and how does one affect the other? Well, they both have composition, but um, the illustrations we do together tell a story through many images. And the ones I do for myself are just, each one is usually an individual story or an individual vision that I'm trying to share. And the big difference here is that we're sharing a story that came to you that you've shared with me. And I'm not working alone, which is really a treat. So. Oh, likewise, I, I, that has been so fun for me to work together because for all those years when I was making books by myself, um, I was mostly alone in my studio working day after day. Although there was that nice um, connection to the publisher and the editor and the art director like we've had working on these books. But mostly I was alone and I have really appreciated having this collaboration that working together, what you, you bring so much to the table. I love your colors and your composition ideas and it's been great to work with you. Well, it's a real treat to work with a pro. <laughs> Likewise. Um, let's see, I have one more question for you. I wondered, um, I, like me, I know you love to swim in the ocean and you've done a lot of snorkeling. How has that um, affected how you made the color in Ocean Lullaby? Oh, it was very integral to how I made the color or envisioned the color for Ocean Lullaby. I've loved to snorkel on many family vacations and in my adult life all over the world. I've been really lucky to be in some of the world's most wondrous, pristine underwater spaces. And the memory of that 
was so fun to revisit in order to define the colors for this book. It made it a very special experience for me. I love how you evoked the colors of the ocean and the bubbles and the layering. It's, it's beautiful. So it's been lots of fun to talk to you about Ocean Lullaby and to read it with you. Um, and thank you again to Green Bean Books for uh, hosting this on your virtual events page. If you have any questions, Laura would love to answer them. Just send them in to lmkbooks.com. It's a fun website, all kinds of projects to do through these hot summer days. You'll get a kick out of it. Hope, hope you visit it. Yeah, and, and I hope you will enjoy reading Ocean Lullaby in the summer, at bedtime, or anytime. Bye. Goodbye.